we did it again. Verizon was just named America's most reliable network by Root Metrics for the 16th time in a row, proving once again that nobody builds networks like Verizon builds networks. That's why we're building 5G right. That's why there's only one best network, Verizon. Best and most reliable based on Root Metrics reports from second half 2013 to first half 2021 of three operators on all network types combined, not specific to 5G networks. One in five suffer. Erase the stigma. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mental, Mental Health, health Mondays. Mondays. Wow, we're, we're uh, excited to be live. That's um, right. Dave and I had t- took a much needed uh, sabbatical break. Um, just to regroup, re- regroup, <laughs> regroup. <laughs> we regrouped ourselves, and we regrouped. We were putting on lots of uh, sunscreen <laughs> slash goop when we were on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so as as we all know, I'm Marla um, every week, and he's Dave, and we are always we're actually Mental Health Mondays makes us very excited to be able to come and share stories, information, um, and everything pertaining to mental wellness, um, brain differences, and just, you know, life that will help us maintain better mental awareness and to always make sure you guys know you're not alone. We always want to remind you guys that Mental Health Mondays is a joint venture between Loving Beyond Reason and NAMI San Fernando Valley. You can donate, and we need you to donate. Uh, to love to Mental Health Mondays by going to either one of those websites, loveandbeyondreason.org or Nami San Fernando Valley, uh, org, and click on the Mental Health Mondays, and you can find a donate tab there as well. We need you. Our guest today is Regina Queen. She is currently a co-teacher uh, for Nami San Fernando Valley's Family to Family class. She is also a presenter for uh, Nami San Fernando Valley to the Los Angeles Police Department, where she educates to the Department on Mental Illness. Like most of us in the struggle, she has a loved one who suffers with mental illness. We want to remind you that our goal in bringing you the stories and experiences of uh, NAMI experts is to show the unity in our community and a collaboration for a common cause, and that's mental health. When we come back, our guest will be Regina Regina Queen. Queen. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. Hey guys, listen up. Learn something. Regina Queen, you know welcome the- to Mental Health Mondays. By all means, we welcome you. Oh, I'm so <laughs> delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You know, I have to tell you, it's kind of a little, uh, a little play on words and a and a mind trick. I I want to so closely you rival your name with Regina King, and I'm like <laughs> Regina. No, she's the queen. She's I a get friend it. Friend of ours as well. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> Regina, you know, we want to let you know. Start off by saying that one of the uh, major breakthroughs for uh, dealing with our own uh, son's crisis. Um, was actually taking the family to family class, and that sort of opened. Not we were we were familiar with dealing with mental health, but to actually sort of also learn how to better empathize with him by seeing things from his perspective made us uh, dealing with his situation a little bit easier for us. And so, you know, we understand um, that you have a loved one as well. You're a teacher for family to family that's dealing with mental health issues. Uh, we'll just let you uh, take it away and tell us a little bit about your story and, and how things were before you realized that you were dealing with a mental health crisis. Wow. Let's see. We'll go back to maybe 2005. That's mm. when everything started um, with my loved one. Um, he was an adolescent at that time. And, about what age? Um, I would say 12. Hmm which is quite young, yeah. you know, for that type of the bipolar one diagnosis. Mm. But, you know, I just assume since he's male gender that just he was going through 
you know, his adolescent phase right. where he's being rebellious and mm-hmm. not wanting to go to school and not wanting to wash his dishes, make up the bed and all that. But it became um, much worse than the normal rebellion in that I noticed that there were times when he wasn't sleeping for days at a time. Mm, even back then. Right. Wow. Right. Which I thought was odd. But again, I'm like, oh, he's a teenager. Kind of dismissed it. Right. And then um, there were other times when he would sleep for days at a time. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So it was back and forth. And at the time, I'm like, oh, my goodness, you're just being lazy. Right. That's wow. as African-American people. Right. Yeah. You know, we're always trained, you know, work, 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 you know, right. be diligent, do everything. Seize your opportunity. You don't have to. You, ha- you got to be bigger. and You have to do more than. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So needless to say, I was quite frustrated and I'll be completely honest, angry mm-hmm. <laughs> and infuriated if I was, you know, truthful. Sleeping. Right. Yeah. Which, which you are. Right. Um, so I started looking for therapy because I'm not one of those black people that doesn't believe in therapy. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you we've been to probably, and I'm, this is no exaggeration, at least 40 different places. Four wow. Zero, not four. Four zero. Wow. Now that's wow. looking for talk therapy or other therapies help. as well? Whatever or just help suggested. in general? Talk therapy, yeah, talk therapy, church therapy, mm-hmm. <laughs> camps, um, you name it. We've been to the Almond Clinic. Mm. We've been to, um, yeah. I have to ask, so just no relief in all of those just wasn't right for, for, for him? Well, I'll be completely transparent again. I didn't want to believe that it was a mental mm. illness, right? Uh, I didn't know that much about it, and... My training has been black people don't have mental illness, which mm. is a lie. So I'll echo that. That's a lie. Right. You know, that's something that white people do. You know, black people, we just, you know, slap them upside the head a few times and they'll get your get your get your ish together. Exactly. Right. But that didn't work. And mm. um, after, let's see, maybe. 14 hospitalizations. Wow. <laughs> I had to, you know, the 5150 where they're taken against their will right. and all of that. Now, now those th- those four, those 14 hospitalizations came between the ages of 12 and what? 12 and mm, maybe 22. And all along the way, people were trying to re- give you the just a gentle reminder that you're dealing with a mental health crisis and you were still having a hard time really accepting that fully? Yeah, because, you know, I'm a Christian and mm-hmm. usually we think, oh, those pray are it away. Those yeah, are demons. Pray it away. Those are demonic spirits, blah, blah, blah. And then nobody in the church could really help me. You know, it was just like, oh, we have to pray, you know, needs a mentor. So we got big brother program, you know, um, you know, different people in the church tried to step in, but nobody really knew what to do. Mm. And finally, we had um, some situations where the police were involved because of truancy in school and um, just behavior that was unacceptable at school, you know, um, being belligerent and not doing homework, showing up to school in the pajamas or not going to school at all, right? Mm -hmm. And I was working, so I wasn't available to manage all of that. So um, finally, I had to have a come to Jesus moment. And one of the social workers said, you know, maybe you should try NAMI. NAMI is an organization that can help family members of people that have these diagnoses. So I still call it a diagnosis. I don't want to label. Exactly. No, it's not no, who your loved one is. It is uh, right. something that they deal right. with. I, I always call it a diagnosis as a handlebar. It's just okay. it's, it's something that gives you the opportunity to actually be able to steer and to be able to help an issue. Right. You got to know what it is. Yeah. And that was the best decision ever. And NAMI, I'll say, saved my life. Mm. Mommy saved my life because I was able to be in a room of other people that understood what we were going through and had compassion because that's the main thing. Mm. You know, if you tell someone that 
your family member has cancer, everybody's rallying around sure. you. But anytime there's any type of brain disorder, people shun you. People are like, oh, that's too bad. And then they don't want to talk to you. Well, so, not, so not only not only is the is the person dealing with the struggle uh, stigmatized, but the family becomes stigmatized. I, and when we come back from this next break, I will share with you um, the, the tagline that I made up for NAMI when they saved our lives. So we'll be right back after this break. I guess it's Regina Queen. Don't move. When Dave and Marla get together, it's hot. You may not realize it, but these words, often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join with me, pledge to be stigma free. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. It's time for the Mental Health mental Minute. Mental health problems and substance abuse disorders sometimes occur together. Uh, we call that dual diagnosis. According to mentalhealth.gov, this is because certain illegal drugs can cause people with an addiction to experience one or more symptoms of a mental health problem. Mental health problems can sometimes lead to alcohol or drug use, as some people with mental health problems may misuse these substances as a form of self-medication. Also, mental and substance use disorders share some underlying causes, including change, changes in brain composition, genetic vulnerabilities, and early exposure to stress and or trauma. More than one in four adults living with serious mental, mental health problems also have a substance use problem. Substance use problems occur more frequently with certain mental problems, indi certain mental problems including, well, there we go. Dave? Depression, anxiety disorders, and schizophrenia and or personality disorders. If you or anyone you know is dealing with a dual diagnosis of a substance use disorder and another mental health condition, please, and we reiterate, please seek professional help. This message is brought to you by Mental Health Mondays. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. So, Regina, I, I mentioned that when we came back, I was going to give you the tag that I gave Nami um, when we were in the, really, honestly, the identical same situation. Um, our story is very public with our son. Um, and we went to family to family. I literally said Nami is the first and the last breath of of mental health and when I say that I was at my last like I didn't even know like how like I don't know how I was even going to stand up and we'd been through so much and they were we were the last that was the, that was my last breath and they breathed the first breath back in with their support and their information and things that really made it possible for me to even a truly understand um, b be able to responsibly communicate and be effective um, and we're no different than you, including having mental health professionals in our immediate family that told us he needs to identify more with Christ or, you know, we got advice that I finally had to say, OK, what can we do to help? I said nothing if you're not willing to educate yourself because you're talking you're, you're giving advice that we know you love us and it's based on where you're coming from, but it's not addressing the actual reality, the facts of what he's actually dealing with. So it's ineffective and it's frustrating to me. So therefore, just don't. Like, let me just be in this getting real answers to solve a real problem. And you keep praying because I do think prayer works. But at the same time, unless Jesus was in the medication that he stopped taking, <laughs> then now things are totally upside down. That's our experience. And I literally said that. I'm like, well, wait, he was this was a manageable situation while he was on meds. So when he went off of his meds and, you know, became psychotic, what, 
Where, what was that? So there you go. In, in addition to a lot of people have a hard time understanding, especially in the African-American community, and this is one of the reasons why our, our foundation is called Loving Beyond Reason, is because, you know, a young man, once he gets his grown man body, it, you really can't force them to do anything. You, re, you have to rely on their cooperation. And, and I can only imagine uh, uh, for a lot of times uh, while I, Marla and I are married, but I would be out of town and she was existing almost as a single mother in that in that scenario. So that can be very difficult. And a lot of people don't understand that, especially when and you can speak to this as well as one who. Uh, 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 educates the Los Angeles Police Department when police officers don't naturally have that empathy for certain situations that we would need. And we've seen it all too well in the recent past of our African American young and, and men of color uh, being dealt with harshly by uh, law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad that you bring that up because. Um, I do the trainings for LAPD for that reason specifically. Mm -hmm. I will say, first of all, that fortunately, and I give all praise to the Most High, um, I haven't had that negative experience mm -hmm. with law enforcement, which, you know, is a blessing. I do know that it exists. Clearly it exists. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say 99% of the time they've been um, caring. They've been helpful. They've, you know, helped me get my family member to the hospital on occasions. I am very persistent, probably more <laughs> persistent than most, because I called the watch commander. I was like, look, <laughs> we have an emergency here in this, you know, 24-hour um, helpline that's available. It takes them 48 hours to get here. You know, fortunately, that's changed now. Um, but, you know, I was just going out of my mind. And so they have been very supportive and helpful. And now that... I do the trainings with them. I do breathing exercises with them because you know, I have compassion for the police officers. Right. Many of them, as quiet as it's kept, many of them have mental health oh, issues. Let me tell you, Regina, <laughs> as to confirm what you're saying, and we too have been blessed. And, and we'll talk about, you know, one of the things that I'm, you know, working on bringing into the community is de-escalation training to, yeah. to families. Yeah. And one of the things is your information, what you've learned and how to deal is also something that is super helpful, but absolutely, and I have stood there in the last crisis we had with our son, and the police pulled me to the side and mm -hmm. were telling me about their own, they were asking questions because their own family members are affected. Right. And, and wondering, hey, wait, how, like, you know, down low, down low, you know, and they would start talking to me about their own family. So we're all human, and your uniform doesn't separate you and immune you to mental health your skin color does not, your status in life, your, your bank account, none of that is, one a, in five is without, a divider. And it's one in three in yeah, the African-American community. True. So we're, we're, we're less than 1% willing to get a diagnosis or deal with treatment compared to Caucasian um, families, which will, are 60% um, really more affected or less affected than we are, but they're 60% more willing to engage in treatment. So that's the, those are the numbers that we're trying to change because we're twice as affected and a, a minuscule amount of us are willing to even accept this is what we're dealing with. It's so true. It's so true. Whenever, you know, someone is behaving irrationally in African-American community, immediately they, they need their they, butt whooped. Right. Or or um, the community at large thinks that they're just misbehaving or that they have malintent. Right. Instead of thinking, oh, do they have diabetes? Right, or something's health? wrong. Right, they have diabetes or a mental health issue. If they're not armed and not intentionally trying to hurt someone, we do need the de-escalation tactics. And we've done ourselves a disservice by telling people, oh, we're so strong and we don't have those type of problems. So it gets into the subconscious mind of the community at large that that can be a possibility, right? Yes, yeah, so all these are, are, are massive issues, and we're so glad that you're willing to come on the show and be transparent with your experiences. And actually, you've already turned the corner. You're already teaching family to family. You're educating the LAPD. You're doing your part. We want to actually get back uh, and touch on some of those issues as well. As soon as we come back from the next break, don't go anywhere. Our guest is Regina, Regina Queen. Queen. We'll be right back.
All right, the, that music says, well, Marlon, not to look like that face. You can't really be a pole Dave, dancer. I'm tired of you exploiting me as a table dancer. Well, you know, it's... What it's, can we do? It's time for the poll question, so it's kind of cute. Can I at cute. least get a poll? You usually do your dance, so it's like being, hey, a poll question dance. There you go. <laughs> All right, last <laughs> week, well, actually not last week, for the last couple of weeks, we have been uh, playing reruns. We hope you enjoyed the rerun of our show with our son, DJ Thomas, and his experiences. Uh, but the time before that, the week before that, our guest was Scott Killaby, uh, uh, the founder of the Killaby Center. Uh, you can actually call them at 866-545-6295 or email info at killabycenter.com. Get your the latest question, Scott's list. And get your latest Scott's list. That's right. The question we asked Scott uh, was, in the U.S., how many adults with mental illness report that they cannot get treatment even after trying and exhausting all options? Your options were... Uh, for answering, were A, 3 million, B, 6 million, or C, 9 million. I can't really remember what Scott said. Marla, do you remember if you got it right? He said six. And so, Regina, we're going to ask you the same question. In the U.S., how many adults with nice. mental illness report that they cannot get treatment even after trying and exhausting all options? 3 million, 6, six million, million, or, nine, or million. 9 million? I would say 9. It's nine million. Ding, 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 ding. 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 That is correct. Now, Scott, we know you're watching this. It's not that Regina <laughs> is smarter than you are. She just made a better educated <laughs> guess from the information. But that's okay. You'll be, you have a chance to redeem yourself at the end of the month. All right. Yes. And at, at the end of the last week of every uh, month, that Monday is always uh, Scott Killaby. He's our guest. He kind of gives us. All things Tips when it comes to dealing with uh, mental awareness. The poll question for next week is... What is the most difficult mental illness to treat? Depression, ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or BPD? Which is Borderline Personality Disorder. We won't actually get to that answer this week. That'll come but we'll give our, next we'll week. We'll give our esteemed guests a chance to throw it on the wall so we can see, which, see how she fares next week. So what do you think, Regina? Depression, ADHD, or BPD? Which one is the hardest to treat? I would say the latter. BPD. Okay. Well, we will see next week. Remember, we'll find out if you're just smart or you're a genius remember, next week. Remember, stop by NAMI San Fernando Valley's website or Love and Beyond Reasons website. Uh, click on the Mental Health Mondays tab and donate. And also, vote. Have you noticed that every time that Tony's always pointing at us? Do you think that, what's, what's that all about? He's telling us to go and to be ready. Is he? I'm shocked that you actually see that happening. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's rude. Anyway, He's rude, our, our guest is uh, Regina, Regina Queen. Queen. And uh, so, Regina, you were telling us about, well, first of all, thank you for sharing uh, Absolutely. The, your story uh, of your loved one dealing with bipolar one. Uh, from the ages, from an early age, that, and I haven't really seen too many kids that young being diagnosed and having to start dealing that young well, with such he, a specific was, disorder. Was, someone, was he actually diagnosed at that age? No, he wasn't uh, diagnosed yeah, at that it, age. It, the behavioral okay. issues started happening. Mm -hmm. But we recognized early onset behavioral differences as early as 11 months with mm -hmm. one of ours, and then big at four. Oh, years. that's true. That's so, true. So, the, but but I, let me just say this. Um, I have to just j piggyback right quick on what Dave was saying straight to Regina. The gratitude is is greater than we can even express because of what you've stated and we've experienced um, to be able to share um, in a community like ours that doesn't accept. And it's 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 an indictment usually against the, the parent. You it. What am I not doing? That, that I'm so desperately trying to do to correct or to change this outcome that I don't even understand um, is huge. I have to say that because I think that the weight of that that I've experienced and to the point of reclusion, just, you know what, no one around me that that is in my circle or looks like me or my friends, I, I even had to stop talking about it because I could see them glaze over like, Oh, so you kind of feel like, you know, you don't get invited anywhere because, you know, no one can really relate and you don't want to burden other people. But yet it's so all consuming for you in love to try to find answers. Mm -hmm. So for you to be here and to speak out, I just have to say I wanted to express what that actually feels like. 
And, you know, it's it's a double, you know, gratitude for me. Yes, that's why NAMI is so important to me, because I've been able to gain community and not just and to be quite honest, I don't really other than you guys now, (laughs) not many other African-Americans. Right. But because we all share this experience, I know that I could pick up the phone and call anybody in my NAMI group and they would drop everything to come and help. Yes, Mm -hmm. indeed. And you can add us to that list as well. Uh, What what? <laughs> uh, please trust, and we know that it takes the it takes not just the village; it takes the entire community. A couple of villages put together. So, uh, you had also mentioned that your son, uh, loved one literally uh, was not willing to take medication throughout that entire process. When did that change uh, for your loved one? So initially, um, he wasn't interested in taking medication because, as you know, there's so many side effects, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it would dull his creativity mm-hmm. so and make him sleepy and just he didn't have that mojo he didn't that want to we, feel like a, he felt that like a edge zombie. that edge right? right and then you know there are other complications that affect your metabolic system mm-hmm. so there was significant the weight gain weight yep. gain and nobody likes that right yeah however there was one time when he was hospitalized and he was in therapy and Someone actually got through to him. One of the, I guess, therapists there told him, well, you know, and this is was very clever, said, well, if everybody's telling you you have a tail, like mm-hmm. if you have a tail on your body. It's, you're you showing, yeah. You have a tail, but everybody else is saying it. Maybe you should look and see or accept the fact that you have a tail. And mm-hmm. so that phrase or statement actually penetrated got him. some self-reflection right and he said maybe i need to do something especially after 14 hospitalizations something is not working Mm -hmm. so after that point he became more compliant but we still had issues because i do want to say this medication is important Mm -hmm. but it's not it doesn't solve everything Mm -hmm. it doesn't solve every problem it doesn't work forever right it could work for a period of time and then there needs to be a change absolutely Absolutely. which was our last episode that was the result Right. Um, and I do believe in prayer. And I know we mentioned earlier that, you know, prayer is not everything. So I think it's both. You know, you have to definitely, in my opinion, have a spiritual connection because, you know, he was lost a few times mm. and the medication wasn't going to help me find him. <laughs> um, and I prayed and prayed and got my prayer warrior friends and mm. sisters to pray. And by a miracle, you know, I was able to find him. I even created a meditation about fear because I had to you know mm-hmm. imagine if you think someone is lost and all these thoughts start rolling in your mind about all the horrible things that could be happening been there right so you know I was able to just be at peace and say no matter what happens it's going to be okay and mm-hmm. fortunately um we did find him but we, and for, for, for those of us who understand, it's the peace that passes all understanding. Exactly. So when you're at your last wits in and you, there's nothing else that you can do, there's always hope. And, you know, the good thing about it is uh, not just you, Regina, which you are definitely a warrior. Uh, all the warriors at NAMI, Loving Beyond Reason, you know, it's good to understand that not only is there always hope, but yeah. you can be a part of that hope. Uh, a great uh, conversation with Regina Queen. We will get back to more conversation after the next break. Okay. Bad. What are you doing? Look worthless. Don't, don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. It's raw, real, and unfiltered. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, our conversation, and time always flies when we're having great conversations. Uh, We are near the end of the show, but before we go, Regina... We would love for you to give us uh, a final uh, word of inspiration for other families who may be dealing with a similar situation. So 
What I wanted to say is that fear is not real. Mm. Danger is real, but fear is what we develop in our mind. And I also want to leave you with this parting thought in that, you know, like I said, medication is amazing and I'm so grateful for it, but there are other things that need to be addressed, like um, our physical wellness, obviously exercise and eating appropriately. And what that may mean for some may not be the same for others, but eating more of a clean diet so that it won't affect your mental health in a negative way. And um, just knowing that you need to have a community of support. So having the support, eating well, meditating, exercising, I know it's a lot of things, but you have to address every aspect. All aspects of wellness. And then the last thing I wanted to say, the very final point is that I personally believe I'm not a mental health professional by any means or a doctor, but I personally believe that a lot of mental health issues stem from trauma and rejection on certain levels. And I think that definitely has to be addressed. So, and it's been beneficial for my family member and he's made um, drastic improvements. And I want to say to everybody in the world and to you, Regina, you are not alone. Absolutely. We're Marlon and Dave. This has been Mental, Mental Health, Health Mondays, Mondays with, with our guest, Regina Queen. We want you to remember that your overall health always includes your mental health and i have to always say thank you to those who show up in the chat room absolutely so and thank those you. watching on uh, our youtube channel so <sighs> we'll see you guys next week regina thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for being with us and our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family at all times likewise my great pleasure have thank a good you night. all right you thank too you for having me For the ones going above and beyond. For the ones reaching out, helping out, and lending a hand. For the ones people count on. You can count on Granger. Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry. Backed by 24-7 customer support and specialists to help with hard-to-find products. Because you've got everyone's back. We've got yours. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger For the ones who get it done.